You, what was really heartening to me, um, not having lived through this moment, was um, when you talked about the early 80s and the, with the advent of video and the challenges that were inherent to trying to, you know, make independent cinema in that moment and then out of the ashes of that moment came The Last Emperor. So um, you want to talk a little bit yeah, about well, that That was time. a very bad period. Um, and there was a very bad... I've had a couple of bad periods. I've been unable to get films done. But there was a very bad period in the 80s and it was three or four years I had without making a film of... I mean, I was working on that film and putting all my resources into that film, but I couldn't find any money for that film as well, the last time. But it was very, very difficult to find it. Well, naturally, you know, a film made like that in China at that time was very, very difficult, but it was out there, it was dry. You know, it was very dry, like now. But it came back, you know, it's come back. And it's always been like that. And I'm sure that history has been like that throughout the film business forever. There have been upturns and downturns. And today, it's slightly different when people say, in an economic crisis, entertainment business uh, thrives. It's different now. There's a lot of free entertainment. You know, and uh, you don't have to, it wasn't just cinema. There was only a cinema. There was no TV even in the Great Depression. There was only, there was only cinema to go to. There, wasn't, there was nothing else for people to do. But now, we've, we've got to be so competitive, filmmaker, filmmakers. They've got to make a, a product or an object that will challenge a video game. With ch your young people have grown up with video games and maybe they prefer to play a video game with four people, a brilliant video game, which incidentally is shot on 35 mil at the beginning anyway, but a brilliant video game. And, uh, or to watch f um, free film on the internet. Um, for example, Creation, this film which you saw the last clip just finished. There's a website that somebody said to me, hey, you can download that film for free right now. I said, what are you talking about? It's not been seen by anybody. I went onto this website there it is, it's been downloaded 40,000 times. So what a, that's an incredible thievery, it's an incredible burglary, it's an incredible banditry. Because not only are they stealing the cost of the film, they're stealing all the promotion I've done. Boom, that's, that's, that's a load of people not gonna, and that's free downloads. So that is an extraordinary fact. And that was just one website of like 20 that had it. You know, and, it's, and a lot of people consider it should be free, the internet. I mean, there's a big philosophy in the world, the internet should be free, you know. But then um, there'll be that will have to um, somehow. I, 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 I mean, iMovies is not available to us all, and the other websites that have happened in the ideal of downloading or streaming that hasn't generated any money. I've, I've um, licensed some of my films for that, well-known films that didn't need promoting even, and it doesn't work at the moment. But you know, it it will work. I'm sure it will work. But it's the wild west, and there's no. There's no uh, laws in it. So until some sort of real laws come into it for, um, and real penalties for stealing somebody's product property, and uh, we were gonna suffer. But I'm sure that will change, and the music business is coming round, if you look at the music business. And I, I have to look at the music business again on that and think that um, the film business will follow that. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's funny you say that um, because um, on the, little movie I made that Dawn alluded to, Anvil, which no distributor, sorry to bring it, but it, it's relevant, yeah. um, the, which no distributor would touch, it was the music business that saved that movie and gave it life. VH1 got behind it, and the music music executives put their passions into getting that movie out in the world because the, the specialty film distribution was saying this movie has no value in this current time. So I think, you know, what, what you're talking about is being resourceful and thinking about your specific films and where there might be other pockets of interest or other potential sources of financing that might be outside of traditional routes or support for distribution that might be outside of traditional channels. Well, I think it's, it's, it's very important when you're um, putting your films together, the elements of them. I always try to put an interesting music component in my film because I knew that if I had Richie Sakamoto doing the score, I'd get a concert around the world on the score or... I like putting musicians in films. I mean, it's um, not a very current trend. But you saw um, um, B Bowie and Dark Garfunkel mm. at the time. They were sort of well-known actors, and were well-known stars who were performers, and they acted really credibly mm -hmm. as well. And that sort of gave you a sort of a, um, a bigger spin-off, you know, mm -hmm. bigger. Situation. And then, if you happen to adapt a novel, then you got the, the reviews of the book and, and re-reviewing the book, putting the book out, the record out. Less today with the music. The music has disappeared. 
um, the soundtrack album was a very popular thing, and that's disappeared. So things do change. Just because it's you know, you don't need a soundtrack album; you can download it for free. You know, yeah, it goes back to the same thing. I mean, it has been a very, very bad thing for us. The internet. It's a beautiful thing to have your BlackBerry, but it's been very <coughs> punishing in terms of the economics of our game. Um, Maria, are we getting close to the question? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I just would love to say is, like, as long as I've known Jeremy, he's been surrounded by a tribe of passionate filmmakers, and whether they're the artists you've worked with directly, you know, that you work with repeatedly, or collaborators and technicians, and you build a family around you, and I would imagine, like, for everybody going through the challenges is to build your own community and your own tribe as you're... You, you really need to have a good colleague. You know, you, it's very hard to do this alone. I mean, it's, uh, I don't have any partners because I, I don't... It, it doesn't work in terms of business partners because my taste is too crazy to have somebody trying to tell me, don't do that, don't do this, you know. And But the rest of it, you need a lot of people to be with you to... to um, to help create the film, it's a, it's a collaborative process. It's a very you know you really need to find people to w who are like-minded to yourself, who um, who um, maybe not agreeing with you on everything, but somebody who's into the into the music like you, mm -hmm. and that helps a lot. Mm. 